G'day guys, welcome to another edition of In The Car With Mossy. Today we're going to catch up with a legendary bloke from Central Queensland. He's the current national long jump champion and uh, he's an absolute legend of a bloke. And today it's none other than Robbie Crowther. Uh, we'll head to the airport, mate. Off to the That'd airport, be, mate. That'd be absolutely fantastic. Where are you heading off to? Back to Brizzy for two days and then I'm back in Canberra. By the way, um, if you're from up there, it's Brizzy. Yeah. It's not Brizzy. Or Briz Vegas, mate. Brizzy. That's the Brizzy. one. Brizzy. Yeah. So, how, mate, Hano Track Classic last night. Took away a couple of medals with you. Yeah. Pretty happy with that. Oh, you absolutely stoked, mate. No, uh, no. Open up with probably the best open I've done in quite a while in my eight, eight long year career. So, it's uh, fabulous. And coming away with the 2x100 as well is even better. Yeah. Bit of something bit different. Is that the first time you've done a four by or two by one? Yeah, it's the first time ever. I, you know, I did a four by one back in '97. That was my yeah. first one ever. So I'm absolutely stoked about that. Our big Hartman ran an absolute blinder of a bend, and obviously, like I said before, I thought I took off a bit too early. Yeah. Nah, she all worked out quite well, and the change was quite good. The way I went, so it was good fun. Yeah, and the long jump, mate. Um, 803. Yeah. With a slight tail or with a tail in behind you, but still amazing set opening up there. That must give you a heap of confidence. It does, all. mate. Uh, I didn't know what you know what shape I was in. Obviously with the speed I got, you know, just obviously controlling that down the runway and yep. taking off at the board and I've had a lot of troubles in the past with the fouls on the first couple of jumps, so it's good to get those that first one. Well yep. the first one, I didn't know what I was doing, I went into a double hitch, it's what I used to be used to do. Um, threw me off a bit, and then the second one absolutely nailed it. There's a bit more there, so I've got to work on a few little cues, and hopefully over in Perth, come out with something a lot better. Yeah. So you said they're a double hitch. Yeah. What's that for someone who doesn't know much about long jump? Oh, two and a half hitch kicks. So uh, if you YouTube, uh, you know Carl Lewis or Mike Powell, obviously running through the air with yep the two hitch kicks. I uh, know I'm. I'm I went back to one and a half with Gary, so yep. my old coach Craig, or just I did the double hitch there for a while, so we cut it back just to the one and a half. Yep. And you think that's working for you? Yeah, it is working a lot better. Um, it's getting a lot stronger to hold the position through the air as well, which is always a great thing. And I'm getting a lot stronger in the gym, which is absolutely fantastic. I'm back squatting and everything that now, where I was just not doing enough back in camera because of a lot of the back problems I had previously, previous years. So it's all come along quite well, which is fantastic. Perfect, man. So, yeah, massive move, I guess, you know, going from Canberra up to Brizzy. So with Hilliard, there, yep. yeah, and then you went up to uh, the Gnome. Um, the Gnome, mate, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. What What's it like when you actually are uh, telling a coach it's over? Yeah, it was, it was quite hard. Now, obviously, being with Craig for since I left school in 2004, yep. uh, being with him that whole time and had previous success with him during years. I, I never had a coach growing up. I never, I did little athletics for maybe one year, got sick of it, um, and then just did it through school because it was fun and always made teams for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was hard because after 2012, and you know, I thought I was in good shape after 2011, uh, the tip fib joint just wasn't, 100% so I was jumping with painkillers just to try and get through the comp but uh, obviously it didn't work out got surgery done and I thought geez AIS was changing whole situation of you know no athletics program no funding no anymore so I went out and got a full time job um, what doing that? I was working as a uh, liaison officer for Australian Indigenous Leadership Centre oh, so awesome. I, was, yeah. I was going to Cairns every month yep. so I was loving that and I was just saving a lot of money, playing touch football with a lot of colleagues and other friends and that as well. Yep, so, yep. Um, funny enough, I did a grade two AC joint in my shoulder. I <laughs> scored a try and I was already tumbling. I thought, oh, I'll do, a, I'll do an army roll here. And yeah. I landed straight on the shoulder. I thought, oh, geez, I think I popped it out. So I was mucking around with it, pulling it. I thought, oh, this is not good. I went to catch the ball and my hand did not go past above I don't know what, what kind of hip height. It just the massive pain shoot through, and the ref called it off and said, "Oh, you got to get off, mate." And that well, was it. 
<laughs> saw the physio the next day and he's like, yeah, yeah, you don't know an AC joint. <laughs> I couldn't put a shirt on, couldn't tie my shoelaces, I had to get someone to do that for me. What are they doing your hair, mate? Oh, mate. I know yeah. you're a massive hair man. Yeah, 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 I got the hair going now. Yeah. Normally wasn't a hair person, so. All oh, right, yeah. I normally just went to shave just yeah, by myself, yeah. but now I go actually see a barber, which is, yeah, it costs a bit of money, but you, know, you, want, you want to look as good as possible. Well, that's there. right, mate, yeah. Well, let's let's be honest, 2011, IAAF. Oh. Sexiest man, according <laughs> to Wikipedia. Mate. Yeah, that's a bit of a stitch up. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was um, Sean Rowe and Jaden Russ um, right. who edited that. I'm, I'm not 100 percent sure, but I do remember someone putting it up. And <laughs> I remember searching myself one day, I'm like, oh, what, what, what is this? Yeah. I'm like, oh, this is definitely a stitch up. But uh, yeah, it is quite funny. And last year, competing in Germany was just a long jump meet. Yeah. So I'm in the back of a school. And I, I knew what they were talking about in German because I just heard sexiest man. And, uh, <laughs> I was just like, no, I'm trying to jump here. I got all this pressure on and I could hear them laughing. I was like, oh, this is this is, this is not good. And I didn't compete so well either. I jumped 769 or something. So. And um, and that's when I did my patella tendon training oh, okay. stuff. And I've had it since then. Um, so oh, I've just been pushing through training. Is it a curse? Is it this whole sexiest man? Oh, thing? Mate, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> nah, it's not too bad. It's good. Good banter, and every time I, I get it all the time at work. Yeah, at Bennett, the, um, <laughs> the old boss. You know you can change it. You can go back. Yeah, and yeah, change I know. It yeah, I think you like I'll it. I'll just leave it there. I mate. think you like it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I can use that. I yeah. get told to use it as a pickup line. I'm like, nah, I can't do it. <laughs> just, just pull out your Wikipedia. And like that. <laughs> yeah, but other than that, it's it's all good fun, and everyone can have a laugh about it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You ever picked up a hitchhiker in your life? Nah, mate. Never oh. in my life. Looks like there's Man, one here. Look at this guy. <laughs> He's got the roo. Who is this? Oh my. Hey, mate. I can make some room in the back. Oh, it's a right. Yeah, oh. jump on in. Oh, nice. Jump on in. I got jumpy. Yeah. yeah. There you go, jumpy. It's good. Just a little bit of a trip out to the airport, Robbo. All oh, right. That's, yeah. that's very nice. How are you, Robbo? I'm good, thanks, Brody. Buzz, how are you? Good, mate. That's all right. News? Not much. You go. Thank you very much, mate. Got three questions to give you, Robert. Three, three, yeah. three questions. Right. Three questions. Three well, questions. Right. First All right. one. First one is. Yep. Can I um? I've got to put my seatbelt on, mate. Yeah. That's yeah. No, that's not. Buckle that. up. Yeah, there we yeah, go. Yeah. Safety, safety first. First question is. Can I present you with your very own naked runners? Oh, oh nice one. Nice. This is a full suite. Yeah. So I've been doing a full suite. You got the away strip. strip. Yep. And uh, mate, that'll get you out. Past eight meters every jump. Lovely. Oh, that's Phillips and Owen did that. Phillips and Owen, yeah, yeah. Meter when he oh, well, he's, that. yeah. He's been on to he's it for a little man. while. He's the man with the headbands and the sweatbands on yes. the as well. So, yeah, I'll, 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 I can follow in his footsteps. I might have to ask permission first. Oh, he's, we'll never, he's never jumped in a naked runners one yet, I don't think. No, no. Oh, no. I thought he turned one inside out yeah, one time. He might have. Oh, yeah. did he really? He might have. I know they in the, the hockey last year, the Com Games, Ashley Nielsen, one of the girls from WA playing for the hockey roos, she wore the naked runners headband. Nice. Yeah. I love to wear it. Yep. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Do you I need you to look down one of those cameras there and say, Hi, I'm Robbie Crowther and you're watching Run Jump Chuck. Hi, I'm Robbie Crowther and you're watching Run Jump Chuck. <laughs> go, go, go again. <laughs> oh, mate. Hi, I'm Robbie Crowley. You're watching Run, Jump, Chuck. Righto, Robbo. That's two questions, mate. Have and you got another one? The final one is, can you please let me out? <laughs> ah, well, that's nah, not you. really, mate. <laughs> my stop. Righto, mate. Well, nah, I don't, I'll leave you boys to it. Thank hope, you very much. Hope he's driving you smoothly here, mate. Mate, good driver. Yeah, yeah. solid. Just 100%. Solid. I'm going to leave Jumpy in here. He'll go oh, right. away. Yeah, yeah, hang on to that. Hang on the mic. I'll Lovely. see you next time you're down here. Definitely, I'll mate. I'll see you uh, on the tour. See you on the tour. See you in Canberra. See ya. You never know with us. Yeah, yeah, we're mad. <laughs> love it. Yeah, absolutely love it. It's one of those things we sort of come from nowhere, haven't we? Come out of the clouds. Yeah, it's bloody fantastic, yeah. and it's good for the track and field as well. You know, yeah. you get that people from back home. You know, they can actually watch it live on stream. Yeah, no, is, live stream is just amazing. Which is really good. Well, how about this? That it was a it was a year ago. That's when the live stream started. Yeah, it right. like it, it seems to me like it's been for a while. Yeah, yeah. Last year, one year ago, Hunter Track Classic. Yep. Um, Greg Mars, CEO of New South Wales Athletics New South Wales, said, "Right, and we give it a crack and took a bit of a risk and yeah, yeah look at it now. It's a, it's a mainstay out there, and AA have taken it on board and oh. not even doing the television stuff anymore, which yep. is I think is spot on because yeah, 
you can't uh, have sport unless it's live. Exactly. Yeah. You know, I think it's a absolutely wonderful thing, and a lot of people, you know, obviously don't get. They just always on the computer searching live results all the time, and you know they can actually watch it now. Which yeah. Is really good. We found last night um, Aaron Royal, local triathlete here from Newcastle, an Olympian. He was he, he tweeted and showed a picture, and it yeah. had like five different screens up. Yeah. Because when you, I mean, when you got Foxtel, you get an, your TV plus an extra three screens yeah, yeah. you can use, and then you've got online. So Fantastic. this is the kind of world we're living in. That's good. And then um, yeah. Tom Campbell and Nick Boyd uh, sent a tweet in with a little little pout, Zoolander pout going oh, on. Oh, nice, and, uh, nice. With the live stream going and the soccer in the background. So, yeah, um, yeah there's a bit of banter on, on about that. Poor who, who kisses better and everything like that. So. <laughs> <laughs> poor, poor old Nick, though, man. He's uh, the, the fella. He's, he's a Liverpool supporter. And, oh, I know. Yeah, he was gutted last year. He, he, was, he was a bit gutted. Yeah. Bit of a ladies man though, isn't he? I he didn't is, realise. Mate. Yeah, you gotta watch him, he's a quite achiever. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta watch him, mate. Yeah. He's mate, an mate. absolute top mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I wanna go back in time a little bit. Yep. Um, growing up, mate, so majority of you growing up in Blackwater, is that right? Yeah, a little yeah. town called Bluff, a uh, little country town, population of about 200 people. Yep. Uh, mate, we used to do so many things out there, uh, it wasn't funny. Uh, go out to the washouts where it's just like a water that goes through, just washes out all the dirt. Yep. We used to go play uh, Tiggy out there. Oh, just pretty much everything. Went camping. I was camping when I was yep. when I was 11 years old. So um, we always did that every weekend. Um, the thing I liked about it most is everyone knew each other, everyone supported each other, and yeah. always backed each other. And they still do it to this day. Like, I remember at Commonwealth Games, always getting messages from all the Bluff crew and um, just like how crap it was that didn't get to show many jumps out yeah. and show the one jump, so they were a bit furious about that. But, I born in Cloncurry, uh, lived there for six years, um, pretty much desert town. Yep. Not a great place, but you know, Dad was in the railway and worked there for most of his years and then yeah, went to Bluff. This is the coal train uh, mining town. Yeah. Yeah, it's good fun. Dave Taylor, is he from Bluff? Or? He's from Bluff, yeah. yeah. They, they claim as a Blackwater boy, but he's definitely not a Blackwater boy. Yeah. So is Blackwater near Bluff, or is it like yeah, a, it's just outside? or It's about 20 k. so we had oh, to catch okay. a bus every morning. Like, I, yeah. went to high, I went to primary school, there was about 60 kids in primary school. You went to primary school? Yeah, oh, good Bluff. Good on you, man, well done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, high school, we had to go to Blackwater, we had to uh, catch a bus yeah. every morning. The bus trip was always good. I got suspended on oh, being on the bus. <laughs> I was one of those kids that um, you know always got caught up in one of those situations where you chuck things out the window to try hit a car on the way by. So right, eh? yeah. I got caught for it. You should. You're a chucker. You should have been into the, uh, <laughs> the javelin on the shop yeah. point. That kind of action. Yeah, I got got busted for it. Jenny, the uh, bus driver, she called me and yeah, got a letter and said just suspended for a couple of days on the bus. What a bugger. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I know, I got called to the principal offices and yeah, well, it didn't end up too good. I can tell how you, you say that really quietly as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, your heritage, mate, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Um, dad's background Scottish. Yep. Um, mum's, mum's dad, Torres Strait, from St. Paul Island. Yep. And then mum's mum's Aboriginal uh, Mitakuta uh, tribe. Yep. Up in Tom Curry there. And then um, we also got a bit of PNG blood in us, Iran and Chinese. So wow. It's a bit of a mixture. Yeah, nice, yeah. yeah. Um, it, it's quite funny, actually, because I get called different now. Uh, I always get asked what the culture is. Yeah, right, oh, yeah. They're quite surprised sometimes because yep. I've got a little bit of that. But obviously, the Chinese eyes there as well. So There you go, mate. There yeah. You go. It's, it's a long history. Like, obviously, the, um, the mining back, back in those days yeah. and then obviously... Torres Strait, the pearl divers and yep. all that kind of stuff. Yep. Yeah, the Chinese back then. So yeah, it was an Iran used to come through Cloncurry through back in the day for um, I think it was the, the, one of the the walls of back. I think there's a couple of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. A few. I, I'm not sure, mate. Yeah. yeah, before our time, mate. So a bit of a mixed heritage there. Yeah, yeah which you're is good. obviously proud. Yeah, I'm yeah. proud. Yeah, yeah. yeah. proud of the Torres Strait as well. Um, I'll take that in, and I like. I'm obviously doing an ambassador role for. Athletics for the Outback, and we had a camp last week in Melbourne, which went really well. We had a couple of young kids, um, 
never left their community before. Yeah, right. And yeah. it was good to take them under the wing and obviously get them involved and um, get them a, bit, a little bit more outspoken. And obviously they don't speak English very well, yep. um, which is their like, third language. So it was always good, you know, get amongst it and get them involved and put their hand up to ask questions. And, you know, they opened up on the second day and I always ask questions. And, and that was the good thing, and that was great to see. And they had some great talent. You know, wearing barefoot, running down the track. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, never been on a track before, so it was really good to see. And there was some good talent in Kita, which was really good. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, were. we can keep them in the sport. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, the, um, whether indigenous or non-indigenous, the hardest thing exactly. is keeping people in the sport in general. Yeah. I mean, um, like with you, I'm surprised you haven't been. Weren't snuggled up early with AFL or something like that with your, your body shape. Oh, yeah. your league maybe as a fullback or. Well, yeah, I yeah. played a lot of league. I um, represented CQ, tried, tried out for Queensland, yeah, right primary school. Yeah. Uh, made NQ volleyball, NQ touch, NQ footy. Um, okay, no. What, what didn't you make? <laughs> oh, mate. <laughs> Oh, I hated volleyball. Yeah, and, right. Uh, right. I, I played eight weeks of it and made NQ, made the NQ team, tried out for Queensland, but I didn't really want to go that next level, so I didn't sign any papers to try yeah. and get picked for it. Um, yeah. I played middle in the in the volleyball, so I was quite loved it actually after, after a while, and um, and then 2012 I had a meet and greet with GWS, yeah, Keith yeah. Sheedy, and. Yeah. Um, the uh, oh, who was it? fitness um, guy that did, done all their fitness, so the running programs and all that, and he yeah. was the next 400 meter runner. Yeah, right, yeah. Uh, and unfortunately, I couldn't do the testing and everything because I had the surgery. Oh, okay. And I think I probably would have regretted it in the end. Yeah, um, yeah. But that year, 2013, I was mucking around going to football training down at Ainsley Football Club. Yep. And um, some of the boys were quite funny, like, oh, have you ever played AFL before? I was like, oh. <laughs> I played once back in 2004. And I'm like, oh, okay, right, yeah. Well, got out there, absolutely nailed it. And then after, like, haven't played football in my ass, they just, because I just pick up things like yeah, that yeah, quite yeah. quick. And yeah. I can kick a footy, I can drop kick 60 metres, so um, on the fly, I'll, I'll put it on the We've got to be careful because this is a massive program that goes around the world. <laughs> Yeah, okay, yeah. And that's that's going really well, so yeah, 
it's good with the young fellas there that keep us old guys on, on our toes with when we're doing competitive training. You know, everyone gets in and gets a bit competitive, which is fantastic. And you get a little vibe out there. It's a bit of a competition, so it's good. So when, when you say competitive, like you're actually you get your six jumps and you're going for it, or yeah, well, yeah. you know, we're doing the bounds testing, so we're doing full stride bound testing. Oh, okay, yeah, everyone's sorry, getting yeah. into each other. If someone goes further, you get pumped up. You go yeah. further again, and then they go further. And it's just it just gets really competitive. Yeah, and it's it's really good fun, and it makes training a lot more enjoyable as well. It sounds like to me like you. It's it's all about time. Life's about timing. Yeah. yeah. And to go out there right now is timing. Maybe a couple of years ago it wouldn't have been the time for you. Exactly. Like you, um, you know, Hilly's obviously got you to this point. He's done yeah. a fantastic job. I mean. Oceana, Oceana, University Games, World Juniors. Yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah, that training's obviously put you there. And yeah, now it's yeah, a bit of a change up, freshen up, so it's going well. It is going well. Um, being with Hill for so long, you know, winning World Juniors, World Juniors, and then Australian Champs in 08, uh, those, those years went really well, and then obviously lingering injuries after that. And I could see with Hill as well, like, most of his athletes were injured and not getting on their team most yeah. of those times and you could see that was frustrating him and then the pressure was going on to him to get us to nationals to compete to keep yeah. our scholarships on uh, at AIS oh, yeah. as well so and, you know AA always had that pressure on him and then on us as well so you know no matter what we were always always did the comps injured or not injured and you know you come away with those wins or you come away with some bad results not much you can do about that but you, the face you see on the coach yeah it's um it's hard to take in as well yep yep yeah what about last year mate commonwealth games in glasgow packed out stadium what was that like to be a part of well sorry first was that the biggest crowd you've ever jumped in front of it it was got you yeah, probably one of the biggest uh, yep. i jumped in the bird's nest and Beijing test event in 2008 yep. and that was that was 45 to 50 thousand wow. people there as well yeah. what's it like um, when you're in front of a crowd like that it's an amazing feeling yeah. um, well Glasgow was actually probably the best stadium yeah I competed at, um, because it was raised everything was close and the atmosphere was so loud and the British and Scottish know the athletics which is absolutely yeah the yeah main thing that you want to know um, so that was we're getting out there, the, the electricity of the atmosphere was totally amazing. Like you get goosebumps, and then once you get in the competition, it's just you kind of block it all out. Yeah, you want to try and focus, and you can see that in who Greg Rutherford, the, my best mate that won it. He, uh, he's I don't know what goes through his head once he starts, he must just go through that process of just blocking it out, and then. That's what I'm trying to do at the moment. I'm trying to go back to the World Junior days where, yeah. when I won it, I always just got to the to the start, block everything out, focus on what I had to do, and not think too much. And it all worked out. So I'm trying to get back into that that memory of jumping again. So, well, Greg, Greg's a blood nut. Yeah, you want to you take the pressure off, mate. You yeah, know, exactly. Pretty, we're pretty hard to beat. Yeah, true. He's one of the successful ones, actually. Yeah, he is. Uh, they, they because was... you jump at night, so if he's jumping in the middle of the day, we oh. get so sunburned, just puts us off. <laughs> so that's the whole thing. Yeah, he's great. I spent two weeks after Glasgow at his place. Uh, yeah, right. It was, it was really good. Good bloke. Yeah, absolutely great bloke. Yeah. Uh, he looked after me one year and flew me over to LA in Phoenix to train for a month. Oh wow! And I myself. Didn't want to go. I, I felt really bad just because he was paying for it and everything. And I paid for food and everything while I was over there. Uh, the house was paid for, and well, he just wanted a training partner. Yeah, that yeah, was yeah. really enjoyable, fun, and he always had enjoyed my company. So went over there for a month and absolutely loved it. You know, saw something different. Never been to America before. And, yeah, yeah. What was that like, mate? It was it was amazing. Yeah, yeah. I, um, we had a few, saw a few famous people over there. Charlie yeah. Saron. Uh, yeah, ooh, right. Seth okay. McFarlane having dinner at a Japanese restaurant. Yeah. And Did they want to get selfies with you? Nah, oh, they didn't, mate. Oh, oh, no. I wish they would have. They were probably nervous. And yeah. Like, oh, I want to go, I don't want to go. Yeah. I went to go out. I went out of the restaurant when they left to get a photo, but TMZ were out there absolutely mobbing them. And then 
the second night we went to that same restaurant, Usher was sitting directly ah. across from me, so, and he had a, he had a chat with us, which was oh, really cool. Yeah. What'd you talk about? Mate, he asked about the green tea um, <laughs> gelato. Oh, right, and which I, is what you went for. It kind of froze a little bit. <laughs> uh, oh, nice part. Yeah. Just asked me, mate, he, he had it, I didn't eat it, so yeah, yeah asked him. And then yeah. He's like, yeah, it's really good. So that was it. It's amazing, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was. It was good. But I really enjoyed America. How cheap it is. The food's actually really good. Yeah. Um, well, obviously they love yeah, it over there. Yeah. Oh, they do. <laughs> the big portions. You can take yeah. it home and eat it for the yeah. next week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is good. So what's on the horizons, mates? Obviously we've got the world champs later this year, Rio yeah. next year. Um, you'll be shooting for both of those, I'm, I'm sure. What yeah. about beyond that? Yeah. Yeah, well, you reckon? Yeah, 30? I'll be yeah. close to anyway. Well, Commonwealth Games 2018, I'll be 31, so we'll reassess. Mate, Gold Rio. Coast, you've got to be there. I oh, know. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be massive. I think that might be the best way to go out. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I'll make the team, jump well there, maybe to even take out the medal or something like that. That'd be fantastic. That'd be a good note to go out on. But, you know, this year I want to get to qualify early. Yep. Hit in nationals, on a win or you know finish in the top three. Yep. Get picked, so I'm not chasing any qualifying marks yep. or anything like that. Um, and then we'll go overseas, complete the European season. That's yep. where it's gonna show where we're in shape. Uh, do a couple of diamond leagues, which is you like your diamond leagues. I love the diamond leagues. Yeah. PV back in was it Stockholm? Yeah, Stockholm yeah, 2012. Yeah, yeah. yeah, absolutely love that place. That's a great stadium. Yep. Everything's so close, and that's where Mitch jumped his uh, Australian record as well. Yeah, so, yeah. good memories. Absolutely, mate. Yeah, and no, I'd like to. I tell you what, I do your deal. Um, if you don't, if you're not there around Gold Coast, you can join Mossy and Robbo. Mate, I'd love Mossy that. and Robbo and Robbie. Yeah, two Robbo. Oh, there we go. Hey, two Robbo. I'll tell you what. I, I could just get rid of uh, Robbo and just go Mossy and Robbie. Yeah, that'd be oh, nice. Oh, I like it. I, I like, like it. Uh, I like the tone of that. It just rolls a lot better, it does. doesn't it? Yeah. Sorry, Robbo. No, that's okay, mate. You'll be right. Very good. Now, mate, you're just about to jump on a plane, so I will let you go. Um, yeah. yeah. You must love being on a plane. You do it mate. that often. What, do you just sit back and listen to music? Or I sit back and listen to music, but as soon as I get on the plane, as soon as I sit down, I, I, I just fall asleep for some reason. Yeah, right. I, that's don't, know, yeah. I don't know why. I don't know how, but I fall take off. But I know when the cart's coming because I can, I can feel it. So I always want, <laughs> always want something to eat or some kind of food. Yeah, yeah. Or you know, obviously a water or something. Yeah, I yeah. always know when it's coming. So, what music would you have if you were? Listening? I asked Benny Saint last week. Yeah, he's a Red Hot Chili Peppers man. He said oh, they're, they're the ones. Yeah, beautiful. Good what choice. Yourself? Mate, I, I'm, I really love my um, '80s, '90s, sort of some of the '70s stuff as well. Yeah, right. Eh? I love a bit of Cold Chisel. Ah, oh, Chisel. Mate, yeah, yes. bit, absolutely ripping. Um, They've had about Someone 14, a bit soothing. They've had about 14 last tours. Oh, they're like uh, yeah. Johnny Farnham, so they'll be back. Love the Eagles, absolutely love yeah. the Eagles. They're touring actually this year in March. Yep. It's, uh, oh, yeah, I, I listen to a bit of everything, really. And what about food, mate? Oh, if I was going to cook you up a meal tonight. Yep. What do I reckon, chicken? Yeah, black people love their chicken. Mate. <laughs> <laughs> you can't go fast fried chicken or any kind of chicken. But yeah, I, I always get paid out. My uncle, he's funny, mate. He goes, what's with you? Because all, all our family, we love chicken. He's like, what's yeah. with you, black people love chicken? <laughs> and um, well, he's not indigenous, so yeah, it's yeah. quite funny. Well, I wasn't actually relating to that. I, just, yeah, I, no, actually, I, I actually had read it. <laughs> but I thought I'd come said, out with that anyway. I like it, I like it. It was, um, <laughs> I, I think I read something on a site. It said chicken parmesan or something. Yeah, oh, the 20 questions. Yeah, 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 the AA 20 questions. Yeah, oh, mate, I love a chicken parma yeah. and veggies. When I, I used to be good. When we used to go on tour uh, playing hockey, it was always you judged yep. a hotel or a pub or wherever oh, you went by Definitely. how big the chicken schnitzel was. Yeah. It was how big. I mean, you'd only come back unless if it was over the plate. Yeah. I don't eat meat now. I'm a oh. so I eat, no, I, I eat. They call it a pescatarian, I think. Oh, so right. Have seafood. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. But if I come to your house and you cook me up chicken, mate, I'd eat the chicken. I wouldn't oh, let it go to waste. But mate, yeah. I'll, 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 I can make you a meal. <laughs> What's your specialty, mate? Oh. Cooking wise. Mate, I'll put my head into it. I'll, yeah? Yeah, I can pretty much anything, really. Yeah, At right. the moment, I've been pretty good with just 
lean meats and veggies. Yep. Um, just trying to get a little bit leaner. Yep. Um, trying to lose the old puppy fat around the gut, mate. Yeah, I've got that. I've got a massive <laughs> doona, yeah. eh? So I'm trying to peel it off. <laughs> I peeled one layer off and there yeah. was another doona there. I'm like, come on, what's happening? I've let myself go, mate. Yeah. Uh, it's hard, you know. And it's hard not to say no. Like, I go into Coles or Woolies and that, and you grab a chalky bar <laughs> and you ask yourself, I always ask myself, do I need it? And I'm like, no. Nah. So I put it away. But every now and then I do treat myself with something like a chalky bar 12 or yeah. a boost. Uh, last night I actually binged out a bit. Yeah, right. Had a bit of mango sorbet. Oh, nice. And right. a bit of Kit Kat cookies and cream. Wow. Yeah. Well, I only had two bars, so. That's okay, too bad. That's all right. Yeah. Just an extra couple so of laps. Treat yourself. That's right, mate. You do. Now, mate, speaking of treat yourself, you're here at uh, Newcastle Airport. Yeah, a bit of Renault's going on here. Uh, yeah, it's um, time to put you on your, your merry old way, mate. So, uh, yeah, thanks very much, Robbie Crowther, for joining us in the car with Mossy. Thank you very much, Mossy. Thanks for having me.